Pretty bright. Okay. Um, okay, Ken, Dwayne, you guys win for attendance. <laughs> um, hi, everybody. Um, my name is Gary Kevorkian. Welcome to the Cisco sponsored session number three today at the OpenStack Summit. Um, how was lunch? What'd they have? I didn't make it. Seriously? Oh, man. Okay. I really, I got to get off the event team. Um, so again, welcome to our room. Um, this, is, this is the third of our sponsored sessions today. And uh, as I mentioned, and we're passing out the cards, uh, we will be doing a small giveaway at the end of the session. We'll collect all the cards at the end of the talk. Um, with that being said, I'm going to quickly introduce our presenters for today. Um, we've got a great tea, uh, duo of scaling containers and OpenStack. Uh, Dwayne Decapite, our uh, Director of Product Management, and Ken Owens, our CTO for Cisco Cloud and the Virtualization Team. With that, I bring you Dwayne and Scaling Containers and OpenStack. So, good afternoon and welcome. I appreciate you uh, attending standing room only uh, all the way in the back. So today we're going to be discussing two of my favorite topics, containers and OpenStack. We're going to be talking about how OpenStack can make your container deployments easier and how to scale your OpenStack and container projects. So I'm Dwayne, Director of OpenStack Product Management. We're joined today by Ken, our CTO of Cloud Services. And we're looking forward to a great conversation about containers and OpenStack. So containers is one of the main themes of this summit, and it's virtually top of mind with everyone in our industry. So quick show of hands, who here is in the process of creating a container strategy? Yeah, exactly. Who here is uh, deploying containers in production currently? Okay, excellent, excellent, good. Um, everyone is thinking about containers. We're going to talk all things containers and OpenStack in this session today. Um, we're going to do a deep dive on some of the container-focused projects in the OpenStack Foundation, including Kala and Magnum. Um, then we're going to talk about some of the recent product announcements from Cisco, including NFVI, Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure, which is built with Container and OpenStacks, as well as Mantle and Shift, uh, Shift, our new platform as a service for containers and OpenStack. We'll also have a demo of Mantle and Shift. Um, and then we'll do a deep dive on two great plugins, Contive, uh, which is a plugin to ACI. Who here saw the great presentation from Mike Cohen in the ACI and SunGuard earlier today? Great. So Contive is a plugin to ACI. We'll talk about that and do a demo, um, as, well as, as well as Calico. Really nice layer three plugin. Um, works with Docker networking, works with Rocket networking, works with OpenStack Neutron and other environments as well. And then we'll close with a summary and a Q&A. But this is our session today. We're going to make it interactive. We're going to have some fun. And we're looking forward to a great conversation on containers and OpenStack. So containers have been around for a long time, I mean, actually since uh, Unix in the 70s. I mean, namespaces, control groups. But it wasn't until um, a little company you may have heard of called Docker really made containers a household name. And they did, a, they did some really good things. Um, they defined a container image format. And they also created a hub repository to put container images. So Docker got lots of people thinking about containers, which is awesome. Um, Rocket, uh, part of CoreOS, you know, really good containers, um, some nice security enhancements as well. Um, Ubuntu has good container, uh, Nova and Lexi. So Linux containers, LXC or LexD, the um, uh, hypervisor for uh, container management. Really good Nova interactions there. Um, also OpenVZ, it's been around for a while. A good container and storage integration. You know, this is Parallels Virtuoso. Um, and people like containers and they're top of mind. You know, they're lightweight, they're fast, they share the kernel, right? But it doesn't have to be a Linux kernel, right? It can also be a Windows kernel, right? So um, Azure Container, it, <coughs> excuse me, service is now GA. Windows Server 2016 has both uh, Windows uh, Server containers as well as Hyper-V containers, which you kind of see on the right-hand side, which is interesting because it's a container in a Hyper-V VM, uh, which is very interesting. But we are an open source community here at the OpenStack Foundation, and we like you know, open source. And the Linux Foundation is working on two major initiatives for containers we're going to talk about today. OCI, Open Container Initiative, and a CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation. 
So uh, this, this was originally OCP, right? Open Container Platform, but that sounds a little bit too much like another uh, project in the industry. So it's not OCP, it's not OCD, it's OCI, Open Container Initiative, right? And we at Cisco, you know, we are proud to be a part of it. Uh, the project is designed to create standards around container formats and runtime. So uh, the, con the container runtime spec is out. It's nice because it's not a monolithic standard, it's modular, uh, which is nice, and also the, um, app the application spec uh, is also out there as well, right? which is nice because it starts talking about some different flexibility in terms of how to deploy containers in different environments. So the CNCF, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which Cisco is also very proud to be a member of, is designed to create new common container technologies uh, around internet scale computing. And you may have heard recently that uh, the first hosted project was announced, something you may have heard of called Kubernetes, right? Also very top of mind, everyone's talking about Kubernetes. So it's, it's very exciting that Kubernetes is now part of CNCF. At the same time, they also um, announced their first technical oversight committee. And whose picture is that popping up there? Yeah, so it's Ken, he's on the technical oversight committee for CNCF. He's also on the governing board uh, for OCI. So Ken, I heard that you were the first person unanimously selected to the TOC, is that true? It's awesome, so I voted for you by the way. So, so very exciting, um, I'm also part of the marketing committee for CNCF as well as the product management committee. Uh, we're in planning, um, lots of interesting things happening. Um, there's Cisco Live this summer. Who here is planning on going to Cisco Live this year? Awesome, thank you. Um, also, ContainerCon uh, in August uh, is going to be very interesting as well. So lots of good, um, lots of good events happening this summer. So uh, now let's take a deep dive about some of the uh, container projects in the OpenStack Foundation. So one is Kala. So Kala is great. Uh, the project technical lead, Stephen Dake, is with Cisco. The idea behind Kala is to make a better OpenStack with containers, right? And so fundamentally putting OpenStack services in Docker containers and managing with Ansible playbooks, right? So it's very powerful. It's designed to provide production-ready containers and deployment tools for operating OpenStack clouds. So this is the use of containers to operate OpenStack clouds. So in the Liberty release, the focus was a little bit more on deploying OpenStack clouds, right? So it's in the big tent to deploy um, up to 100 nodes. All the major services are there, you know, Nova, Glance, Keystone, Ceph back storage, um, choice of distributions, right? But the focus was more on deployment rather than operations. However, um, with the Mataka release, the focus became on the operational side. Security enhancements were added, upgrade, reconfigure, uh, deployment time was reduced by 80%. New services around the operations, including Elasticsearch um, and Kibana. So with Mataka, the focus is on operating OpenStack clouds at production scale. So very exciting, um, a lot of the good work that's going on with Kala. In addition to Kala, we're also very excited about the Magnum project, right? So Magnum is essentially designed to make, that's a, a good sign there, there we go. So, so Magnum is designed to make containers a first-class resource within OpenStack, right? And it's the first project, if you will, allows multi-tenant support for uh, containers as a service, right? It does this by creating an asynchronous API around heat templates, right? So it's asynchronous, so it scales great. Um, it leverages heat, so it's essentially a wrapper around heat, leverages the same you know, identity mechanisms, the keystone. So it's a really nice way to make containers kind of a first-class resource within OpenStack. So the architecture is nice, right? So it basically supports, you know, multiple container orchestration engines. Kubernetes is supported, Swarm is supported, Mesos is supported, you know, and save with Kubernetes, right? So by default, Magnum is going to create a minimum of two VMs, one for the worker node, you know, and one for the master node in Kubernetes. Those are all installed on a micro OS, you know, whether it's Fedora Atomic or Core OS. And then it's all managed with heat templates, all the OpenStack services, Nova, Neutron, Ironic. So it's a great way um, to kind of provide container as a service within OpenStack. In addition to Magnum, there's also some very interesting things going on in the Courier project, right? So this essentially maps Docker networking, you know, lib network, and converts it into Neutron APIs. Lots of benefits in doing that. Now you can network your containers just like your VMs within OpenStack, but you can also use all the Neutron plugins. You can use the OVS Layer 2 plugins as well as Calico plugin, which we'll be talking about a little bit later as well. So lots of interesting things happening uh, within Courier 
on the OpenStack Foundation. So uh, Cisco recently announced some, uh, some major new products. One was NFEI, Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure. This was announced at a Mobile World Congress in February, um, built with containers and OpenStack. NFEI is very nice, very powerful, because it's kind of the best of both worlds, right? You have the flexibility of network function virtualization, but it's all on turnkey infrastructure. So it installs well, it, it uh, configures well, it scales well. Um, and it's very nice to scale, you know, with different networking plugins. It's built with our, our partners, Red Hat and Intel. Very excited to be uh, working with them. So RHEL OSP, RHEL KVM, um, as well as Intel technology like SRIOV, single root IO virtualization from their enhanced platform awareness. Uh, but even though it's, um, it's a built-in partnership with Red Hat and Intel, it's a Cisco product, so single access to support, single point of uh, support. So we're very excited. Um, there's also demos of NFEI downstairs um, after the session also. In addition to NFEI, another product that was announced um, at Cisco Live Berlin also in February was our new platform as a service, Mantle and Shipped, uh, which supports both containers and OpenStack. And now I'd like to turn it over to Ken for a deep dive on Mantle Shipped as well as Contiv and Calico. Thanks, Gary. Sure. Thanks, Dwayne. So, um, you know, when I kind of looked at at how containers are evolving over the last several years, it's, it's kind of obvious that there's, there's different use cases that you want to address. And so the first one, you know, it's kind of looking at how do we help, kind of what I like to call the IT administrators, the network administrators, the compute administrators, the infrastructure admins, right? How do we help them make managing and running containers as a service much easier and faster for their business? Um, the other two groups are, are sort of both developer personas, but they, they have kind of different interests, right? One is more cloud native development, so they just want to write their code, push it out um, as fast as they can. The other ones are more on the data analytics, data scientist kind of side, trying to figure out, like, how do I take business insights from my application data that I'm creating, and how do I then automatically make enhancements to my application to, to drive further business improvement? The, um, the experience is sort of a, I kind of want to put like an end-to-end -end view of what the user experience we're, we're trying to accomplish was. And so if you kind of think about this from a developer-centric viewpoint first, um, most developers just want to write their code in the way they always have written their code. Most developers have sort of, a, I call it a religion around how they develop their code. But then when they go to deploy it, they want to be able to just deploy it wherever it makes sense from a business standpoint. They don't have to want to figure out how do I write to these other infrastructure APIs or how do I manage this um, new API that's just been released by Amazon, for instance, and how would that impact my code deployment there? So they want to just basically write their code and then have a multitude of options to deploy to and have all sort of the, you know, what I like to say the value of cloud was being able to kind of automate all this infrastructure for, for IT. The value of what we're trying to build is, is sort of automating all of the software development lifecycle for developers. So give them a way to sort of develop their code, deploy it in a multitude of options without having to understand the underlying um, physical APIs of those underlying infrastructures. The, um, the path to do this was sort of going from, you know, the entire SDLC process where we have different tools that we've, um, we've completely integrated and tested and validated um, across multiple um, infrastructures we can deploy into. And I'll show kind of a demo of this in a few minutes. From a, um, from a container standpoint, we're leveraging Docker containers. We're using um, both Mesos for sort of the, the, like I call the data scientist persona use case, as well as Kubernetes for the for more cloud native development. Although you can use either one in either case. You don't have to, just because you're doing data science doesn't mean you're going to leverage only Mesos. But most of the frameworks exist in Mesos for, for kind of the data type of applications. The other piece then was, um, as, as if you've deployed containers, you know it's, it's pretty easy to get a Docker container deployed. And it's pretty easy to like write your code to you know, deploy in that container. But then if something goes wrong, it's not so easy to kind of identify where in that whole process of you know, Marathon or Kubernetes did something break. And so we spent a lot of time kind of looking at how to enhance that visibility into the container deployment um, scenario, as well as the application um, service dependencies that sort of get created on the fly. Like when you scale up an application, there are dependencies that sort of get deployed underneath that scale up um, request that we kind of kind of track those dependencies and make sure that all the services are up and kind of monitoring each of those services to see what their performance is like. 
And then we want to kind of feed all this back into the issue management system so that if there is a problem in the code, the developer can track that through the processes they use today. The key to the kind of the deployment piece of this is under the covers and we call it mantle to kind of be the bedrock of microservices, if you will. We sort of looked at it more from not just a container infrastructure, but what do you need to sort of do an entire, you know, management and maintaining of a new infrastructure for the data center. And so we have sort of a, a similar model as, as you would think. You have these control nodes and you have the resource nodes. We also have some um, edge nodes now to do kind of like load balancing and, and firewalling between different um, service boundaries. We solved um, the problem of kind of deploying this to a single node or a single data center, but we, our main focus was really on how do we deploy containers across multiple clouds. And so we spent most of our time kind of looking at and, and developing a way to make sure that when you create your application and you want to use a service that's in Amazon and a service that's in Google, you have the ability to create one application that leverages those two different services without having to deploy your application to either one of those clouds. And so we kind of take care of all that, that complexity and the networking needed to do that and the, the service discovery that's required to do that and all the enhancements and, and routing to make sure that you can route between these different clouds all under the covers for the developers. They don't have to think about that or worry about that. The, um, the nice thing about Mantle though is if you do really care about that, we let you have access directly into Mantle as well. So you can go in and modify and clean up and, f and kind of pre-configure what you want to have happen. So at, at Cisco Live a few uh, months ago, we kind of launched, this is where we're at today with Shipped and Mantle. We're using Terraform as sort of that abstraction layer to the infrastructure. And so if you, um, you know, for a lot of, of, you know, OpenStack is a good example. We have several packages that work with, you know, with OpenStack versions and with, um, you know, working with, with Magnum for one of, as a Terraform package, just for Magnum, for instance. But if you also want to run across, like, public clouds, we want to support public clouds as well. And so we have support and Terraform packages for all of those, including vSphere. And so if you're running in a VMware environment and you're trying to make the transition to containers, we have a platform that kind of help you with that whole transition from VMware to containers. And it's not like an all or nothing. It's sort of this, I like to kind of, kind of a hybrid DevOps model. You can continue to work in the environment you're working in today. You can add the capabilities that the cloud native capabilities are bringing you in the public domain and in your private domain. And you can bridge those two over time in a way that makes sense for your business. So this is what the interface for Shipped looks like. Um, it's at uh, ciscoshipped.io. Um, it's very easy to use. You, um, all you need is a GitHub account. Right now, we're going to add some additional identity providers as, as our enterprise customers kind of ask us to add additional capabilities. But right now, it's mostly just GitHub. Um, the mantra we have is build, deploy, run. And you'll see me kind of go through what I mean by that mantra um, in a few minutes. So when you click on that, um, you know, sign in, if it's your first time signing in with your GitHub credentials, you have the ability to select private repos or public repos or both. Um, if you're using an enterprise GitHub account, we also allow you to connect into your enterprise GitHub account as well through the same process. Um, once you go in to build, the build use case, like I mentioned before, most developers have a way they like to develop. And so the goal was to make this as lightweight and as easy to leverage what they're doing today as possible. And so using kind of the 12-factor process for developing, we create a project in GitHub when you create a new project. Um, with that name, you then go in and compose your product project. And as you can notice, we have a bunch of different little, you know, starter packages that you can use in your development. Um, most, uh, you know, I can tell you the smallest of these is like, you know, is Go, Golang. The most, um, I guess, heavy of them is, is probably like the, um, the Python one we have. But they're all different packages you can use to do your development to kind of help you with the build pack and get started. We also give you access to, um, like if you want to get a Docker Hub image or you have your images in Docker Hub, we've connected into Docker Hub. So you can go into Docker Hub, search for an image that you want to use, um, take whatever parameters that um, that vendor has said you have to fill in to use that image, and we deploy that as part of your de development environment that I'll show you in a minute as well. Um, we also have added a few things like um, some Cisco technologies if you're using Tropo for like collaboration or using um, the APIC EM, which I'll show an example of, of Contive a little bit later. We have the ability to kind of integrate with Cisco public APIs as well. So you can then leverage their API code within your development. 
Um, before I go here, when you go to deploy, it just opens up, uh, you just open up a terminal on your laptop, and you just do a get command. It pours in the, we automatically push that command. We give you a command to copy and paste. You paste it into your terminal, it pours in the code. Um, we're using Vagrant to set up like local VMs on your desktop. Um, your leverages Eclipse plugins as well, so if you're using Eclipse, if you're using other um, development frameworks, it has integrations to pretty much all of the popular development tools. So you just developed what you normally would, would, would develop, and then you just do a git push to push your code back up to GitHub. If you use an enterprise GitHub, you do a git push into your enterprise GitHub account. Once you do that, it goes back to this screen where it says that you've, you know, you've built your, your project, now it's time to deploy it. And this is an example um, that kind of shows I think sort of the power of what we've tried to develop here, which is um, your building of your application is very dependent today on where you plan on deploying it in the future, right? And so what we try to do here is say you could have a staging environment that's maybe in Amazon. You could have a, a QA environment that's over in this private environment that you do your QA testing in. And then your production environment could be in Google, right? We don't really care where you have all your different environments at, but most companies have different environments that they test and, and do QA and deployments in. And so your code doesn't ever change. It's just where you deploy it to is what changes. And there's ways to kind of set up these environments. Um, and you can kind of define, if you want, how much CPU you want to give that environment, how much um, disk, and, and you know, sort of what kind of ports you want to use. So you can do this on a per container or per service basis, if you will. And then there's a, we tell you where to, to deploy that environment. You can create new environments um, by just adding a new environment and entering in kind of the, um, like your credentials, we're using uh, an open source um, security tool called Vault from HashiCorp that kind of securely keeps your private, um, your, your, your key pair in a, in a vault, if you will. It's how they used to come up with the name. When you go to run then, um, once you've deployed that code into this environment, we give you a single view of your code running in whichever environment you want to look at. And so again, if, if this is a production environment and you're running across multiple different cloud environments, including private cloud, we give you a single view of that application and the CPU it's using across those multiple environments without you having to know exactly which environment it's running on. We give you um, a lot of details into, um, you know, kind of the, um, the actual Mesos, in this case is a, a Mesos example of, of what's sort of load and what's busy, what's some of the busy components going on within that, that cluster. As well as um, from a data analytics standpoint, we kind of feed in, take this data out of the environment and feed it into a tool that lets you then go in and kind of create your pipeline to look at how the data is flowing and what type of um, enhancements you want to make to that data. And so you probably, by this point, you're kind of wondering, okay, you've talked about something kind of cool, but what about networking, right? Is this goes a networking company? And so we've been doing two things in the networking space. We've been working in user space to try to make the actual container networking as fast as, as physical networking with something called FDIO. We've also been working on policy and kind of like making sure that um, storage and networking um, security concerns that enterprises have are being addressed with a project called Conti. Both of these are open source projects. Um, the main goal of, of the networking work that we're doing is to make sure that um, you know, containers are treated in a way that enterprise network guys would expect them to be treated, right? Again, if you're a developer, you probably don't care about that at all, right? And so for, for, for the next few minutes, you might just tune out and say, yeah, whatever, la, 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 I don't care. But if you're, most of you guys are probably network, um, network minded, network administrators, um, network architects, you probably care about how we do this. And so um, we, we've done a lot of work around making sure that we can do multicast, we support IPv6 in our containers. Um, we can give you an IP per container, or we can basically give you like a service IP. And so you could have lots of you know, containers sitting behind a, a IP address that's being low balanced by a low balancer. So you kind of have an option of how you want to manage your networking at that point. Um, we also provide um, service you know, domain name resolution. And so your containers actually have a human name that you can read. So if you can create an app server, it'll say app server, right? If you want it to be numbered like one through eight, you can number them one through eight, right? So we, we let you kind of do things you'd expect to do as a, as, a, as a deployment of a server into your production environment. We still show you the UUIDs. If you really like you know, managing UUIDs, we won't make you stop doing that. But we kind of think it's easier to give you a human readable name. So when you see a failure, 
you can tie that directly to a server that you understand what it's doing. And then the policy piece we feel like is really important because um, a lot of um, um, visibility gets lost as you start going through these different layers of abstraction. And so we want to make sure that we expose everything from the very, you know, the basic component of uh, a port on that container all the way up to your policy that you define for which traffic can flow between which um, VLANs in your network. And so to take a look at, at Conteve um, a little bit, um, the idea of Conteve is again kind of looking at, at both um, mostly operational intent. Um, we're working with Congress here in OpenStack to kind of work on application intent a little bit further and kind of make it more application developer centric. But right now this is more kind of an operational intent mode. Um, it, it works across whatever orchestration framework you want to use for containers. So it's not tied to only um, Kubernetes or only Mesos. It's also, um, the, the whole goal of Contiv is to sort of provide a framework that lets you extend your physical policies and ACLs that you use in your physical environment to the container world, but also lets you have sort of the cloud native capabilities of scaling up your application and scaling down your application easily. And so we've, we've built into it the, the concepts of scale and being more elastic in the deployment. It's, it's very um, scalable at this point. It's about 10 times the scale of what we can do with, um, with VMs from a policy standpoint. Um, and it, it basically leverages whatever underlying infrastructure you have. It doesn't have to be Cisco under the covers. And so I'm going to try to, this video was giving me a hard time earlier, so I'm going to try to switch over to this screen. You get blank. <laughs> Gotta love. That's why you don't do live demos, and then it turns out you wish you had done a live demo. <laughs> so the as I kind of bring up this demo. Um, what I'm going to try to do show, show is the actual way that Conteve um, sort of takes the, um, the policy that you define and kind of gives you a nice interface to deploy it into. I was afraid it was going to blow up. Okay, so it's um, primarily like the key points of, of Conteve is it's open source, it's applying policy across network and storage. Um, it uses a kind of a blueprint is what we call it, but you can call it something else. You kind of have your web, your app, and your, um, your Redis database. You're using sort of the, the model on the right hand side what you want to deploy into and be able to kind of deploy firewall policies that are, can be elastic. Um, and so if you look on, on the, kind of look at the YAML file, it's, it's a very basic file. Uh, we have a nice little user interface that um, is a, a web-based interface, interface that you can log into. You can kind of see that it's running um, VXLAN. If you kind of look at a deployment scenario, you want to deploy this policy into your development environment. Um, it's, you know, kind of looking at the, the processes it shows you have your web environment, your, you have, you know, some apps, web servers that running, app servers running, your database running. Um, you can then create a production instance as well. So you now have sort of, you know, two environments running, your dev and your, your production environment. And you can look at the, the you know, the, um, the graphical interface now will kind of show you when you look at your applications, you have, you know, your, your dev group for web app and database. You have policies defined that allow traffic from web to the private network and from um, database to the private network. You then kind of look at, um, these are like the dev ones. You also have production ones. And then they ask to kind of scale up. So you saw um, in a few minutes you'll see a screen that shows the number of um, services spun up from three to four. And you can basically stop it all and bring it back down and it'll show in a minute the um, when it stops it, it shows that all of those application servers we just showed you are gone. So that's pretty much the, 
the gist of the demo in the booth downstairs in C11 tonight or more like tomorrow, we can show you, kind of run through it actually in live. We have a wired connection down there, so we don't have to worry about demos <laughs> in the booth. So um, definitely stop by. Um, I can show you both Mantle shipped and um, the Contive stuff in the booth. Um, anytime this week you want to see it live, not like a recorded like that. So um, the last thing I want to kind of cover was then um, Dwayne kind of mentioned Calico a little bit earlier. And we also have demos of, of Calico we can show you um, downstairs as well um, live. But the idea of Calico was, you know, it's one of the first um, projects that supported sort of a, an overlay networking for containers. Um, it supports uh, most of the major platforms, and it's kind of like this v, um, v router mode, right? So it's not going to really, um, it connects with Live Network and CNI. So it's, it's pretty good from like an OpenStack model standpoint with Neutron. Um, it worked really well with, with what we were trying to do early on before we started kind of doing more with um, FDIO and Contive. We plan to still support Calico as well as other type of networking, um, container networking standards, because it's, as, as Dwayne mentioned, with OCI and with CNCF, our goal is to be open and connecting with multiple different projects, not just trying to lock you into one Cisco way of doing things. With that, I'd like to invite Dwayne back up for um, any sort of questions you may have. Thank you. I will let Dwayne do a summary real quick. Oh, <coughs> thank you. <coughs> Great job. So, OpenStack can make your container deployments easier. You know, projects call it and Magnum are going to be key parts of it. Um, as Ken mentioned, the Linux Foundation, lots of smart people doing lots of good things. Um, so very excited about what OCI and CNCF are going to do. Um, and also, please go down to the Cisco booth to see the live demos as well as some other goodies that are down there as well. And uh, we really appreciate your time and attention. We appreciate you standing pack packed in there, uh, standing room only. And I believe we have time for a few questions. Um, yeah, we'll we'll do as we'll do the best we can. So um, we've got a oh we got a mic over there. We got a mic over here. We'll take a couple of questions and then we'll just have to con continue the conversation. Um, Alicia, wherever you are, is going to start collecting all the raffle cards. Um, so any questions that we can take? I thought your name was Gary, not Mike. One question, or one thing. If you could put all the cards to the center aisle, that'll be easier for us to pick them up. Thank you. So if, if, if you have Qs, they've got As. <laughs> wow, you guys just nailed containers and open all stack. Right. I'm, that's the most, okay, wait. Okay, oh. Mike, Mike uh -huh. <laughs> Leave it to Mike. Um, dumb question. How is Cisco going to uh, monetize this and benefit? So, do you want to yeah. start that so, one? so there's two ways. One is through um, kind of an OpenStack support model, as you'd expect. The other way is um, more of a, a product model. So we will have a um, kind of like a V block, if you will, for containers. So those are sort of the two models. We're also going to keep everything open source. And so if you don't want either of those models, we're not going to force you out, out of the open source model. And, and Cisco is a leader in cloud infrastructure, compute storage and networking hardware, and Willis yeah. software also. So it's, it's different ecosystems. Yeah. So uh, these projects you are going to uh, push upstream in OpenStack? They already are. Uh, well, are they already there? They're in Linux Foundation today, uh, Apache. Okay. Um, uh, Cola and Magnum are both OpenStack projects today. So um, there's been a little bit of discussion in the last little while about um, deploying OpenStack itself as uh, container services and some work done in call on Mesos. Um, uh, has there any, do you guys have any view in terms of Kubernetes as a deployment tool and, and you know, how ready is Kubernetes to do something like the call of deployment workload? Yeah, so from, from our experience it has, um, there's two pieces there, right, from a, um, like early stages, it's ready for like testing, but it's not ready quite for the production grade workloads. Um, mostly because of the monitoring and some of the health components of it. Um, I would, if I had to guess, I would say within the next two or three releases of the project, you'll see it like being perfectly enterprise grade. So it's, it's on its way there for sure. And it's moving much faster than I ever thought it would move. It's, it seems like every new release has like a ton of new capabilities. So. Right. 
Any, anybody else real quick? Because one more, and then we have to actually make room for the next company coming into the room. How does this interact with ACI at all? So um, Conti plugin interacts yeah. directly with ACI. Um, if so you create your policy in ACI, and if it sees Conti there, it'll deploy directly to Conti. Right. And then uh, with an OpenStack Neutron, right, so there's ACI plugins, there's group-based policy plugins, as well as uh, Nexus VLAN-based plugins that include the 9,000. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks, um, everyone. We're I'm going to have, okay, Dwayne or Ken, one of you is going to pick the lucky winner. All right. All and right. I got news for you. Your odds are going up as everybody's leaving because right. the winner who, must be present. Who, who wants a snap? Oh, wait, there's right, you more. Can't, you there's can't more. have one. Oh, wait, hang on. All right, there's more. Okay, a couple one. more, a right. couple more. You got to mix them up again. There <laughs> all, on, these late, all these there late comes. Hold on, Dwayne. There we go. All right. All right. That's it. Okay, well, okay, couple, couple. There's always one. There's Man. always one in the crowd. I think you confused him when you said go. your name was Mike. All right. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Ken. I've got to be nice to him. He's my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Chez? Chez Chi Chi? Try From I'm, CHT. I'm, yeah. I'm CHT. There we go. Yeah. Hey, hey. All right. Congratulations. 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 Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming to the Cisco room. We'll see you tonight at the uh, booth crawl starting at 6 o'clock, and we'll see you tomorrow starting at 1045, and we'll get the demos up and running. You can see all the good stuff.